side chain compression. You'll be using this a lot um, uh, in in two aspects. You'll be using it as an effect and as a mixing technique. Now it's really important to look at them in that way. Um, basically, um, side chain compression uh, is just compression. Uh, that's all it is. But it's compression with uh, it works in the same way, but it's another input um, is going into a tra into uh, the compressor and affecting a different input. So usually how a compressor works, um, every time volume goes over the threshold, um, every time no, every time uh, the audio goes over the threshold, say if you have it set to uh, 15 point uh, five decibels, every time it goes over that, you get a gain reduction, right? So what happens is, uh, I'm not sure how this started. I'm sure, I think it started in the 80, no. Okay, I'll just say it started decades ago where you'd have a different input signal going into uh, your rack compressor. And um, they were using that for like drums and shit. Uh, so basically we have a sound here. <laughs> kick here so what you want to do is you want uh, the kick channel 7 going into uh, the compressor this compressor on channel 6 and how you do that you just select sidechain audio from 7 right and then you'll see the kick is going into it and you can hear it What this does is it takes the input signal. I already said this. It just um, reduces the signal every time the kick goes through the compressor. And it's, uh, think of it that way, it's not, there's no side chain plug in. It's just compressors and a compressor with a, a different input going into the side chain. I'm trying to think of a diagram. Um, so basically we'll just move this down and I'll show you the effect. So like I said that um, using sidechain compression can either be an effect or it can be a mixing technique. Now the goal of the mix, and I'll get into this later, is to make everything sound like one thing and give it clarity. And uh, the goal is to mix everything together so it sounds like one sound and um, what happens sometimes as an example when you have a kick and a bass um, and they overlap the same spectrum and they're happening at the same time um, then you want to use uh, um, EQ and sidechain compression um, but not always if it's like a Benny Benassi kind of pumping kick. Just Google it right now, or YouTube it right now. Um, it's a very pumping, and the kick and the bass don't happen at the same time. And uh, yeah, you can do that, or you can use a combination of slight um, side chain compression and EQing so you don't get any frequency conflicts. So the, the punch in the body of the kick um, is imminent for that brief moment in time and then the kick can um, release and come right back up um, with that being said uh, we'll get into we just went over the, the threshold and you can see what it's doing here it's basically say if you like hired someone to you know listen to the metronome in their headphones and turn the volume down and back up that's basically anything I think of it like that. Um, attack, you'd want it to be at zero. Or as close as uh, 0 point, uh, point 0.01. Or like as like the fastest attack you can so you don't get um, the kick, uh, the click of the kick affected. And here comes the tricky part. Um, 
when you are working on a track, um, you'll more more than likely uh, copy the, the side and shake component and then put it onto different parts and just adjust the threshold. What we're going to do is we need to um, set the release so it's kind of in sync, so it's kind of like an effect and it's kind of um, kind of like how a delay, you can sync a delay. You want this to sync so it um, releases um, on the quarter. <laughs> It's just all reduction. Now there's that. Then there's another. There's another thing. Say if you have, if your kick is super long, it has the click, the component, and then it has the body, like a little wump, like that big burrito-looking thing there. Um, the compressor will trigger twice um, so what you're gonna want to do we'll just reset that is uh, put a filter stage between the output of channel 7 and the input of the compressor and what that'll do I'll show you what that'll do so we're listening to just the kick between um, between stages right now Right, we have a filter. What that does is it'll isolate uh, the click of the kick. Right, that's all we hear. We can turn the cue up. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you just have to find that click, and everything else kind of won't matter. Right now, we'll listen to it, and we'll have. We'll have more of a of a the, we'll have more of a refined um, control of the signal, and more of a refined um, you know how the the gain is uh, bleh, how the gain is reduced. Oops. What the hell did I do? What's going on here? Oh, I had it set to something. Sorry. smoothness to it. We can take that and we can copy it to say the, the clap track or the percussion -y area. We want it so you can barely hear the reduction. See, the goal is to have everything kind of mold together in one sound. Uh, in the human ear, it's a thing where the human ear can't hear um, something going from uh, loud to quiet. It can't differentiate it. It's like a weird thing. See, there's gain reduction there, but let's see if you can hear it. Yeah, you can, but it's clearing the headroom. And what that's doing is it's it's bringing bringing all the sounds and kind of putting them together and making everything work around the kick. <laughs> The 
this would be an example of uh, side chaining as a mixing technique. Just kind of clean up the transients, but you can you can't really hear it when everything is together, but you can, and it you know it it uh, gives that illusion of uh, it'll give that illusion of loudness at the end. It'll give that illusion of well, it won't give, it'll make it sound good, and it's not so much side chaining everything. It's um, uh, ducking some things and then side chaining as an effect other things. And uh, we have a kick here, or not kick, we have a bass that was side chained already. And you can see what it looks like. Visual representation of that. And um, we'll just see what everything sounds like without you know looking at the levels really taking away from the kick. The kick should be poking out. You should be doing this as much as you can get away with. Um, for all tracks, except the kick. And what that does is it um, squishes and glues everything together. Um. For this, you'd want a little less uh, gain reduction. And you may even want the whole of the kick to affect it. side chaining in your mixing. <laughs> 